comes but once a year, so you better make hay while the snow is falling. Oh, that's opportunity calling you. God, I love that song. Christmas comes once a year, so you better subscribe while the snow is falling. The Patreon is calling you. Just kidding, everybody. Welcome back to a holiday edition of Whiskey Ramblings. This uh, video will be going live on Christmas Day, so uh, if you have nothing better to do, please uh, welcome. Again, if you're new to Whiskey Ramblings, new to the channel, the way this series works is I drink and I talk. And now that the Christmas rush is over, so to speak, I want to talk about dead malls. I, I was actually really happy this season to see that the malls were busy, that people were shopping at them again. That was really nice to see. I actually went to several malls uh, this, this holiday season all across the state of Ohio, and they were all busy throughout the holidays, and that that's great. I love it. But it would be foolish to assume that that resurgence is going to last forever. A lot of malls are on borrowed time, and that makes me feel a certain way, especially when you go into these malls when it's not the holidays, and, well, they look the way they do now. So we're going to talk about it today. But before we get going and before the whiskey kicks in too much, I want to do my ad read, my, you know, talk about my business. Much like the malls, my business, uh, Chimera Miniatures, where I make custom minis, it, it has its, its waves of busyness and then its periods of stagnating right now. This channel is a way for me to advertise my custom miniatures and, uh, you know, I'm definitely trying to find ways to increase the sales of those. I offer one-of-a-kind miniatures, uh, both the kit bash, which are just different minis all uh, mixed together into one one-of-a-kind creation, as well as my not-safe-for-work Heroclix repaints, which shows, uh, which, of course, Heroclix are miniatures of popular comic book and superhero characters, but instead of their super suits, I make them in their birthday suits. I also have channel memberships, the ability to for you to give a tip, as well as a Patreon. Um, so if you want to support the channel, uh, if, you know, the spirit of the season happens to take you, uh, you know, there are many ways to support the channel. Uh, and, you know, with that being said, don't want to rant too much about my, my business or business woes, whatever, uh, we're going to get into talking about malls. Doesn't that sound nice? Also, please note that I've recorded this well before Christmas, so uh, if anything I talk about today is uh, not, kind of, doesn't fit in line with other things I've said in recent videos uh, about my channel, uh, just know that this was recorded well in advance. All right, so malls. Y'all know what a mall is, right? A shopping mall, a mega mall... It's a big building where you have all these different stores, usually a food court, maybe even a movie theater or other, other forms of entertainment. The idea that you can spend a whole day shopping, relaxing, eating, and just doing whatever you need to do without having to go back outside. The concept really took off in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, but the more prominent online shopping has become, the more the malls have suffered. There's no secret reason about it, that's just how progress works. I mean, you see it all over the place, not just in mega malls. I mean, there are, I mean, parts of Ohio, uh, central Ohio, where I grew up, they, there were all these, like, strip malls that were just packed in the 90s, and they've slowly dwindled to the point where most of the buildings lie empty. And while seeing, like, an abandoned, more or less, strip mall is a little depressing, it's not quite the same feeling as walking into a shopping mall and, like, seeing this. When I was a kid, Columbus, Ohio had City Center. City Center was a three-story mall, which is something you still don't see too often in Ohio. Most malls have, at most, two stories. City Center had three of them. Now, also, one of its first anchor stores, the Lazarus, had actually been open since 1851, and it, so it had been there over a hundred years, and it was actually connected to the mall via a uh, enclosed bridge across High Street, which is like the main drag of downtown Columbus, if you, if you don't know what High Street is. It's actually on State Route 23. And I can remember many a year 
because uh, this would have opened a year after I was born, but as from the from my first memories, I remember going uh, from the suburbs into the downtown with my mother and doing shopping at City Center every year for Christmas and for other things, and it was always packed. Now, the mall would close in 2009 due to a lack of business, and this was ultimately caused over the years by two things. One, other large malls opened up in other parts of the near, near the affluent suburbs, the two main ones being, well, the three main ones being P Polaris Fashion Place, with, uh, Easton Town Center, both of which are still doing very well, and then Tuttle Mall, which is actually on a, now a dead mall itself. So these were a little bit more convenient than going all the way downtown, so they took business away as well as City Center became a not very safe place. There were several shootings, some of them involving children. You know, the local gangs kind of were fighting over the mall as turf, and it drove both customers and businesses away. Now, I, I'm, I'm giving you this history for this. So the parking garage that was for City Center is actually still there, even though the mall is, is has been torn down. It's an underground, massive parking structure that actually is also uh, used for when people come to see, to the Ohio Theater where to see various plays and stage shows. And I remember it used to be you would park there and then you would go up into the mall and then walk out of the mall to get to the Ohio Theater. And I remember in the last years of the mall's existence, walking up into the mall from the parking garage and being amazed at how other than like one Chinese restaurant, I think it was called Flaming Walk or something, and like a shoe repair place, there was nothing in this mall anymore. It was this massive complex. According to Wikipedia, it was 1,250,000 square feet, and there were only two shops left in it. I wouldn't see anything that astounding again until a few years ago when my wife took me to the Forest Fair Mall outside of Cincinnati, which is, you know, not... It's it's longer than City Center was. It only has two stories, but this was an absolutely massive mall. You see it a lot on the Dead Mall subreddit, and there's nothing in there. Like, there's, there's a Kohl's and a Bass Pro Shop that were on one end of it, and then there was like an arcade, and everything else in this thing was empty. And I remember both, in both instances, the eeriness of it all. These megalithic structures that were meant to be bustling with people at all times while they were open were abandoned by both retailer and consumer. These husks of dead commercialism left as a relic of a bygone era where eBay and Amazon were new trends that people didn't fully trust. But while these are eerie, the fact that there are malls that are still open, still doing business, but would be considered a dead mall, going to those can be even sadder. Another mall that has since been torn down in Ohio was the Upper Valley Mall in Springfield, Ohio. I first found out about this mall when I used to make trips around the state looking for um, basically nerd shops that might be selling minis or collectible toys. And uh, I, I found there was a store, it was called Epic Loot. There was also a store called The Treasure Chest, both of which still exist but have relocated. And I walked into this mall and it was surreal. The mall had no anchor stores. There was a Subway and a not an Auntie Anne's pretzels. There was like a coffee shop that also sold pretzels, which was kind of weird. Other than that, it had no food court. It had a CVS attached to it. And, you know, like uh, it had a couple of like, like a, like a Bath and Body Works and a couple little knickknack stores here and there. But beyond that, like nothing. And the two stores I went to see were pretty good, so I mean, I did go back a few times before its closure. Uh, also, they had one of the Spencer's gifts that still had the original neon sign, which was pretty cool. But like, other than a few people here and there, the mall was completely empty. And now, the thing that happens when, you, when a mall start to die, some of the things that really, really seem to be the kiss of death for a mall, one is when they start losing anchor stores. 
and, and that makes sense because, you know, the people who own the mall itself make their money off of the various stores paying them rent. And these anchor stores are huge, massive sections of the mall that, you know, likely make up a huge portion of the rent. So if your anchor stores start leaving and you're not collecting any rent for those spaces, well, yeah, you're going to suffer. And I don't think it actually technically counts as an anchor. So the other thing that tends to be the kiss of death for a mall is if it's one of the malls that was made that had a movie theater and then the movie theater leaves. This has actually happened a lot all over the country that, you know, movie theaters in malls are leaving the malls and building a new facility close close by that has you know new screens they've got those nice uh those nice recliners and basically they've decided that it's just more worth their money to build a brand new building than deal with retrofitting these older structures within the shopping malls some of which have been there since the 70s or 80s and malls that have been making a resurgence lately and i'm not just talking that they were busy during the holiday season um there, near where I live now, there is the Indian Mound Mall in Heath, Ohio, and Indian Mound has had a huge resurgence in popularity lately. In fact, their food court went from being completely empty to it's, I think it needs one more thing inside of it and the food court will be full again. A lot of local businesses have moved in rather than be in various strip malls and it's actually really nice but one of the big things that i've noticed ever since the mall started getting popular again is because they still have their movie theater and it's one that they have updated with all the modern amenities i don't go to the movies much but i have been there a few times with my wife and it's a very nice theater also, they did lose some of their anchor stores, but they were lucky enough to find tenants to fill them. One such tenant is actually a trampoline park, which is always seemingly pretty popular. And actually, one section of the mall has been rented out by a church, and it's called the Church in the Mall. So there are actually several former storefronts that are now rented just constantly by this church. They've got like a cafe, like it's it's one of those like modern, like, hey, yeah, we're not gonna sit in some pews and just be preached at. They kinda, we're gonna have like a cafe light type setting and you know, where there's music and we want, we want church to be a fun experience. I've got my own views on how that goes, but you know what? I do love the fact that they're trying something new and that they are help keep, they, they've really helped keep this mall afloat during the, you know, the harder times. Actually, the local comic book store moved into the mall there. There, near the food court, uh, a place that sells Funko Pops and anime figures just opened up. And if you're more the hippy-dippy occult type, there's uh, one of those, too, that just opened up. It's, all, it's really cool. Also, if you find yourself at the uh, Indian Mound Mall, uh, head over to the food court. There's a, a local cheesesteak place. Mwah, mm, so good. But yeah, no, uh, definitely I have noticed that malls that keep their movie theater tend to have the ability to rebound. Another great example, the Colony Square Mall in Zanesville, Ohio, first opened in 1981, and they have been, uh, they, they, were, they were on the risk of becoming a dead mall. They have since rebounded. And interestingly enough, it's not just that they kept their movie theater, it's that they added one. In 2002, the original anchor Lazarus closed, and three years later, that part of the building was torn down for a movie theater. I was actually just there the other weekend. Sadly, their Joanne Fabrics is closing down, but they've got, they've added so much to that mall. They added a brand new video game and uh, nerd gaming store. They have, uh, they, they've, they've just, they've opened like a barcade, but it's also an arcade where the kitties can go and earn tickets on machines for prizes that seems to be doing very well. I mean, it was absolutely packed. I mean, that, that was also partly due to the holidays, but again, that movie theater, that's the magic ticket, more so than even the anchor stores. If you don't have a movie theater, then your mall loses a big draw. And the thing is that we talk about malls these days like they're all already dead, like like they're all, they're going extinct. And 
While yes, a lot of malls aren't doing so well, there are still plenty out there that still bring the crowds in on a weekly basis. Again, I talk about being in Ohio. There's the South Park Mall near Cleveland. There's Polaris Fashion Place, which even after a couple of shootings is just as popular as it ever was. There's Easton Town Center, which is one of those like kind of outdoorish malls, which is kind of a new niche or concept. I don't like it as much in the winter, but highly popular. The Beaver Creek Mall uh, near Dayton, not only is it doing well, I mean, it is thriving. Uh, if you are a fan of things like Pokemon or anime, there's a local business that they used to just be a small, like, card and game store, but first they opened up Original 151, which is a store that sells Pokemon imports from Japan, uh, and then directly above it, uh, on the floor, the next floor up, is uh, Nani, which is the same owners, but they now they're selling anime merch. Apparently, 151 is moving to a bigger spot in the mall because they're doing so much business they need more space to add more items. And they're opening a ramen restaurant in the mall. Same owners again because it's been so popular. And it's, it's amazing to see. I mean, there are plenty of other malls out there that while they might not be thriving, they are hanging on well. Like uh, the St. Clairsville Mall or the Eastgate Mall. Yeah, they might have several shops that aren't currently occupied, but there are people coming. There are new shops opening all the time. But yes, you know, the majority of malls, especially in my state of Ohio, because we had a lot of them, just like Ohio has had a lot of amusement parks in its history, a lot of them are fading. But why does that matter? Why do we care that these dinosaur establishments from an era that doesn't really uh, meet with today's, you know, convenience value? So yeah, back in the day, it was real convenient. You go to one place, you find everything. But now it's not just about it being convenient, it's about finding the best deal. And the best way to shop around and price match is to do all your shopping online. So why do we even care that these malls aren't doing well? Well, I don't know about you, but I know why it bothers me. I consider myself a disciple of both mall culture and community capitalism. What is community capitalism? Well, it's the idea that rather than buying online, and this is just a term, I'm, I'm calling it this, there's probably an actual term for it that I don't know, but it's the idea that instead of just buying something online from God knows who, you put, you invest your money into your community. and. Going to malls, spending time there, shopping, eating, going to the movies. Uh, sometimes there'll be like a putt-putt golf course or something. But you're spending the money in your community. Even if it's going, even if it's a chain store, so technically those profits are going to a national chain, that local chain still, that, that national chain's local, you know, location in the mall still has jobs for the people in your community. And I think malls were and are a great place for this to occur. The idea that under one building, there's not only so many places for you, the consumer, to shop, but that also means that there are so many local jobs. It creates, and, and, and through that, people can earn money and then be consumers themselves. I, I have nothing against Amazon. I love Amazon, but also Amazon I mean, who knows? Who knows? Fortunately, Ohio has quite a few Amazon distribution centers, so Amazon does mean jobs for my state. I don't know about other states. But, you know, it's rather than some faceless corporation, you're buying a pair of shoes from Brenda at the Journey store. And like I briefly mentioned, I love what the Indian Mound Mall near me has done, which is that they have opened, that a lot of local businesses have opened their doors as opposed to the chains. And I think that's really cool that, you know, now it's all the local businesses, local business owners, rather than being located in some random strip mall that you, unless you happen to drive by it, you'll never know it exists. They're all at the mall. It's a one-shop stop of, of supporting your community. And even if you go to the mall and you don't talk to anybody, while you're there, you're still out, you're still around people. You're not just sitting at home in front of your computer like a complete social outcast. You actually have to go out, be amongst people. And yes, as someone who doesn't like crowds, that is not always easy for me, but I think it is very beneficial. And 
because of all these positive things that a busy mall gives us, the opposite, the lack of these things in a dead mall is very creepy. You know, when you go into the mall and it's a total ghost town, the shops, not only are, is there nobody in them, but in many cases, the businesses have closed up shop never to return. I think it's especially creepy when you can still tell what that business was. When I was at the Forest Fair Mall, I walked by a storefront that it was clearly a lens crafters before it. All of their shelves were still there, all of their desks, like lens crafters corporate decided not worth bringing any of this stuff along when we uh, vamoosed out of there because it was all still there and had been there for who knows, a decade or more. Maybe there's still like a sign you can see in the big empty space that's like, oh, this used to be, you know, this kind of a store or just sometimes certain stores at the mall have a very distinct storefront and so when they leave you can tell what it used to be um i think hollister is a big one of these as is spencer's gifts the really creepy ones are the ones where they're not they didn't even bother to take any of their merchandise out it's all still the, there like i don't know it whether or not it was because they closed up shop due to not paying their taxes or they left suddenly but like Apparently, they just left so quickly that they didn't even bother to take their merchandise with them. And you start to see other things, too, like they'll start turning off some of the lights during the day to save on energy costs, which is like, wow, so what used to be a big, bright, inviting area now is, is dark and dismal and melancholy. If you're enjoying the pictures that I've been posts that I've been having on a slideshow this entire video, uh, please check out the r slash dead malls subreddit. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, I, I certainly do. But I don't know. I feel like the more things change in this world, the places of joy and crowds and laughter and merriment are slowly becoming abandoned be that malls, amusement parks, uh, just sometimes entire towns are having this happen as their population ages and the younger generation moves away. We are losing our communal spaces. And I feel like that's just creepy as fuck. So, thank you for listening to this nonsensical rant i don't even know what the point was i wanted to talk about malls and i have and i i hope you enjoyed it maybe you did maybe you didn't but i i don't i don't know man i i just want to thank you for being here i want to thank you for helping my channel grow as much as it has thank you for helping me grow it in the future please help out in any way you can whether that is financially or just by liking commenting subscribing share these videos around um also uh i will soon be recording my q a video for the start of next year so this is your last chance to get those questions submitted uh for the q a again uh, go to my links it's at the top of my all my links page and uh submit your question for the q a until next time everybody I'm Mr. Sean, this is Chimera Miniatures, and I just want to let you know, not only to Alpha Great Day and an even beta tomorrow, but also that... A Christmas comes but once a year, so you better cash in while the spirit lingers, and slipping through your fingers, boy, why don't you realize Christmas can be such a monetary Merry Christmas, everybody.